Hi guys, in this video I want to show you how can you simulate a buck converter. So the buck converter is the most common converter in power electronics and uh, as a characteristic equation it has the output voltage equal to the duty cycle times the input voltage. This is the behavioral equation that we, we want to obtain. Any different result from this it means that it's wrong. So let's start by doing some variables dot param v in equal to 10 volts we will assume 10 volts as a parameter and a fixed duty cycle of 0 0.5 so we expect the output voltage to be exactly the half of the input voltage now as the switching frequency since we are low power we can assume that fs is equal to 250 kilohertz which is the standard switching frequency of the low power DC DC converters. You can go even higher if you want. I will do some simulation later. So let's start by putting the voltage generator with a parameter V in. With, easy, with an input capacitance of 10 microfarads. This capacitance uh, in, the, in the end of the simulation is, it is basically useless because uh, when you put uh, a parallel capacitor like this in the spice with a volt with a fixed voltage generator it will change anything now we want to generate the the pwm for the switching wafer you can actually use two methods the first is to generate a triangular waveform with a dc constant voltage and put them in a comparator the result will be a variable square wave with a fixed amplitude between zero and the supply of your amp in this case for instance 5 volts and whenever you change the dc constant voltage basically you're gonna change the width of your square wave so i will use directly the method of the square wave i will show you how to do the other methods later so first build the half bridge switching pole by using MOSFETs like this we will we'll design a synchronous buck converter so we don't need the diode and this node is the switching node in which we are gonna attach our inductor since it is a low power inductor we expect it to be low 2.2 micro array will be enough with uh, 10 microfarad 100 microfarad of output capacitance and load 1 ohm this is the output voltage node and now we have to design the square wave generators the easiest way for the square wave generator is to use an high side high side designed like this so select the pulse v initially equal to 0 and v on 5 5 volts should be enough to turn on these MOSFETs if it is not, just raise the, the on voltage. Now, for the high side, the delay must be zero. I will explain how. Because uh, you can generate uh, the low side uh, also in another method, which is using the invert logic gate. Now, I will generate the low side manually with the voltage reference generator instead. So rise one nano, one nano. And you want to define exactly on has D over fs and the, tip, and the period over 1 over the switching frequency be extremely careful because the high side generator must not be grounded so this must not be grounded 
And why is that? Because the high side switch does not have a ground. In order to turn on the switch, you have to supply a gate source voltage greater than 5 volts. So you have to connect this high side switch between the gate, let's call this, let's call it gate 1, and the switch node. This is correct. Now, from the low side switch, you can do basically the same. Remember to tra remember that the period in which it is on is exactly 1 minus d. And the delay is d over fs. You can do this, or you can generate it Let's call this uh, gate 2. And let's select proper MOSFET. I will take the first of the list. I honestly don't care. You can do this. Or you can even generate... Uh, you can even generate the low side from the high side with the inverting gate. If you use this, remember to put v high equal to 5 otherwise the output of the inverted logic gate will be 1 and 1 volt will not turn off will not turn on sorry the your transistor so let's simulate this and let's see if it is if the if this work before uh, before any simulation we know that from the equation we expect something like this d times v in. So let's put uh, in as the input voltage and as behavioral voltage the theoretical output theoretical output sorry for my bad English is gonna be v equals v V in times D. If the output voltage and this result are different, it means that something is wrong. We want also to analyze the gate and source voltage of this MOSFET, so we will put another B level voltage and we will write VGS high which is equal to V G1 minus V S W. So let's run this simulation from at le from for at least uh, 10 milliseconds and let's see how it works badly. So first of all, the theoretical output is 5 volts, exactly as we planned, and the output voltage is uh, 5 volts, yes, with a ringing on the beginning. So there is a transient, but the output voltage is 5 volts. So basically we have well designed this DC-DC converter. Let's see also the the switching frequency, sorry, the, the high side voltage and the low side voltage. So, they are complementary to each other, but there is still a problem. You see that uh, there is a uh, a point in which both both of them are interacting. In order to avoid uh, some spikes in your circuit, uh, yes, exactly. This is exactly what uh, what I meant. There are some spikes here of 36 amps at the beginning. You have to put a dead time. So let's see the param dead time. Let's call it dead of 15 nanoseconds. This is a comment, by the way, so let's turn it in D. So, the dead time, basically, it eats away your time in which the high side and low side are on. So basically you have to put minus dead exactly here. Let's run again the simulation. 
and let's see if the dead time is still present. So we have the high side and the low side. As you can see, I put a, a bit of the time and we should avoid some spikes. Well, the spikes are still present, by the way, but it is, it should be, <laughs> realistic, uh, realistic speaking, it should be more obvious. This is the inductor current, by the way. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for thank you for the thank you.